In this lesson, you will learn how to make predictions and inferences based off sample data. Let's start with the problem. Jackson School is having a party for 600 sixth graders and 400 seventh graders. The school is buying lunch for both grades to celebrate. The options for lunch are either pizza or hamburgers. Miss Johnson surveyed a group of sixth graders and seventh graders on which food they were, would prefer. Below in this table, you have the summary of the results that she got from that random group. And it's important to recall that, you know, she just sampled randomly. And you might recall that you can have a small random sample of a population. In this case, the, pop, the entire population would be all of the sixth graders and all of the seventh graders. But instead, she takes a small random group of both grades in order to make inferences about the entire population. So let's take a look at this data and let's answer some questions about it. So below, I have the questions. Now, we want to know, first, which food should Miss Johnson buy for each grade? She doesn't have time to run around and ask every single 6th grader and every single 7th grader. So what she did was took a small sampling. And as you can see here from the number of results in 6th grade, right, the total number of students she asked was 60. And over here in 7th grade, she asked 20 plus 35 or 55 7th graders what they would prefer. So now let's take a look. In 6th grade alone, 40 students answered that they would prefer pizza for their celebration lunch, and 20 students replied that they would like hamburgers. So since more people want pizza, she can make the inference that the entire grade would most likely prefer pizza over hamburgers. So that means for sixth, she's going to get pizza. Now let's take a look and see what happens when you go to the seventh graders. In seventh grade, 20 students want pizza. However, 35 students want hamburgers. So for 7th grade, she should order hamburgers. So 7th will be hamburgers. And again, this is a random sampling. So, you know, she's getting a rough idea of what the entire class population would want. Now let's take a look at the second question here, and I want to make some more space for us to work. So what I've done here is rewritten the total class number. So there's 600 sixth graders and 400 seventh graders, and we'll need to keep that in mind as we solve the second problem. So the second problem says, if Miss Johnson could buy both pizza and hamburgers for both grades, how many pieces of pizza and hamburgers should she buy for sixth grade? So in this case, we're not going to give a preference. We're going to say we'll get some amount of pizza and some number of hamburgers, and that will cover the population of the sixth graders. So now to do this, what you need to do is make an inference based off of the data, which means you're going to use the data that you're given in the random sampling to infer what you should do for the entire population. Now let's begin with pizza. As you can see here, 40 students like pizza. And again, let me just remind you that the total here was 60, right? 40 plus 20 is 60. So that's the total sample population. So if 40 of those 60 prefer pizza, let's take that into a fraction or a percentage. So 40 over 60 reduces to the fraction 2 thirds, ultimately, right? And 2 thirds can be converted to the percentage 66.66 repeating, um, that would repeat, percent. Or you can just round this to 67%. Now what you need to do is, since about 2 thirds of the random sampling wanted pizza, find out what is two-thirds of the entire population. So two-thirds of 600 means you're going to multiply. Remember that of means to multiply. So two-thirds of 600 is two-thirds times 600. Now you multiply the numerator by the whole number, so you get the fraction 1,200 over 3. When you divide 1,200 by 3, you get 400. That means if she's going to buy pizza, she should buy enough for 400 students. Now let's take a look. You can figure out how many hamburgers she could buy by doing subtraction, right? If you know the total number of students, and we'll do this in green, the total number of students is 600. 400 students should get pizza, so subtract those guys away. And you're left with 200 hamburgers for the remainder, remaining uh, students. So this would be 200 hamburgers and 400 pizzas. 
Now, if you wanted to focus on hamburgers first, you could have done this differently. So let me just remove all this, and let's talk about how we could have done it by just looking at the number of students who liked hamburgers. So imagine we didn't already figure out the value for pizza. Now we're looking at 20 students out of 60 who want hamburgers, right? So you would write this as a fraction. 20 out of 60 prefer hamburgers. Now, when you reduce this fraction, you get down to the simplified fraction of one-third. Now, one-third can be written as the percentage 33.333, and this would repeat, so 33.3%, and you can round that to 33%. So now you need to find one-third, or 33% of the total sixth grade population. So now what you would do is, you remember the total population is 600, and to find one-third of 600, you multiply. One-third times 600. Multiply the numerator by 600, and then you get the fraction 600 over 3. When you do this division, you get the value of 200, which is the same thing that we did when we originally found the value for pizza and then used subtraction. In this lesson, you've learned how to make predictions and inferences based off of data. Thanks for watching.